And I think that that is quite an interesting situation. It's not a painting or a sculpture, which is in itself absolute. I believe architecture can't be absolute. Without wanting to sound arrogant, we do have a kind of educational mission as architects. We really do. One simply has to ensure that tolerance for different activities and functions remains present. Adidas is especially interesting for us insofar as it isn't confined to an urban context. So it was an unusual architectural task for us. Our approach has simply been, if four and a half thousand people from 40 nations are meant to live and work in one place, then we need an urban concentration. That is basically the idea behind Adidas. The Adidas idea is also not visible as a built structure, but rather as the space of the atrium as a vertical three-dimensional city. The idea is to develop an atrium where all the workspaces and designers surround it like a hub. In addition, there's also a great landscape park that completely flows into it on the ground floor and the first floor. It's been elevated nine meters up without stilts so that an urban space is created here and allows for three-dimensional movement. These are walkways of laces, which, like in the film Metropolis, lift the city, the urban in terms of height. Always at the intersection points where the walkways meet the circular hub, there are specific functions, cafes, where you can get together to talk, informal meeting places. In the office, some people sit overlooking the landscape outside and the campus. And some have a view of the courtyard. The Adidas team thought everyone would want to sit toward the outside. But when they could choose themselves, most of them said, no, I want to be at the hub where things are happening. And that was, of course, a fundamental confirmation of the concept. 